Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today I am gonna talk about all the junk I carry around all the time or what the cool kids call EDC or everyday carry. Now I've put off doing a video like this for a while because it always seemed a little immodest to assume the world should care about the mundane crap I keep in my pockets, but you guys do ask about my carry gear on a fairly regular basis mostly my carry gun and holster, but I also get questions about my watch and my pocket knife and stuff like that. So we're gonna do this, but we're gonna do it my way, which means I'm gonna start off talking about the gear, but then we're gonna dive into some related issues that you guys had no idea you were signing up for when you asked for this, but you did ask for it, so you only have yourselves to blame. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. My carry gun is a Smith & Wesson Model 332 Ti snub nose chambered for 32 h and R Magnum. I carry that in a Filster City Special holster with a DCC belt clip. The knife is a Spyderco Cat. For a flashlight, I carry a Streamlight Protac 1L. The watch I wear most of the time is a Citizen Eco Drive. I've also got a Palm Flip Top Pepper Spray Dispenser. And then there's my car key, an iPhone mini, and my wallet, which is an Alpine Swiss Minimalist. I'll talk a little more about the gun first because that is probably what you guys came here for. The gun that I'm carrying day to day changes a lot more frequently than any of my other carry items. And part of that is just because of the nature of this job, but there are other reasons and I'll get into those more in just a minute. I always end up coming back to a lightweight snub nose revolver. My favorite so far has been the Smith & Wesson 332 Ti. It has an aluminum frame and a titanium cylinder, making it among the lightest of the J-frame revolvers at just 13 ounces loaded. Uh, Smith only made J-frames in this caliber for a few years back in the early 2000s, and they're pretty tough to find today. I just got lucky and picked this one up for a bargain price because of the worn finish, but mechanically, it's still in great shape. I installed a set of the Crimson Trace laser grips, the shortest ones they make. That is model LG405, if you're curious. Uh, even without the laser, these grips have the best shape that I have found for J-frames. The ballistics of 32 h and Magnum are comparable to a 38 Special out of a two inch barrel, but with less recoil and you get six rounds instead of just five. My carry ammo is the Black Hills 85 grain jacketed hollow point. It consistently penetrates about 15 inches in ballistic gel tests, and it also tends to have better availability than most other ammo in this caliber. The main thing I like about snubbies is the ratio of weight to size. They can be extremely light, but they are not so small that I have a hard time fishing one out of my waistband. The angle and the size of the grip make them easy to draw consistently. Any semi-auto that weighs just 13 ounces is gonna have some ergonomic challenges to deal with that I personally just don't have with a J-Frame or a Ruger LCR. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on all these other items. Uh, I've been carrying some of these things for a very long time. The knife and my watch I have had for over a decade. I have duplicate backups of each of them. They're nothing special. They were not very expensive. Most of the things here were relatively affordable. The stuff I carry gets knocked around and abused. Some of it gets lost on occasion. I don't wanna have to stress over whether I should use or carry something because I've got a lot of money invested in it. So. I tend to stick with stuff that's decent but affordable. This knife is not a fighting tool by any stretch. 95% of the time I use it to open packages. The rest of the time it's a makeshift screwdriver or pry bar, things that I would never do to a $300 blade, uh, but this thing was 45 bucks, so no big deal if I break it. I've owned a few uh, different variations of the Streamlight Protax over the years, and I like them, but this is one piece of gear I will probably change at some point. Uh, I use the light multiple times a day, every day, and I end up changing the battery at least once a week. In the near future, I would like to replace it with a light that has a rechargeable internal battery. I never leave the house without a pepper spray dispenser. If I happen to encounter a potentially violent situation, there is a very good chance it will not require a deadly force solution. Pepper spray gives me an option that is, in the words of Chuck Haggard, between a harsh word and a gun. 
the palm formula is reported to be very potent stuff and the dispenser is one of the more user friendly on the market. These things are affordable. I buy them by the case and give them out to friends and family. It's really hard for me to find any reason not to carry something like this every day. Now a trend you might notice here is that each item is fairly small and uh, lightweight relative to other options. The gun is small, of course. My phone is small. I wear a small watch, although that's mostly because I have a small wrist. My car key is the only key that I carry. I've installed push button combination locks on everything else I need regular access to. You might also notice the conspicuous absence of certain items like spare ammo or a fixed blade knife or uh, medical gear, stuff that a lot of people would consider essential. Now I can and have carried all of those things and I've carried bigger versions of the things I do carry, but ultimately I tend to default back to a somewhat minimalist approach. The upside is that I literally do carry it all day, every day with very few exceptions. This stuff can go with me regardless of the weather or what I'm wearing or what I'm gonna be doing. But my real reason for taking this route is that I like to be prepared, but I also have a low tolerance for physical discomfort caused by carrying around too much stuff. Now that's not something you're supposed to say if you wanna be taken seriously in the concealed carry and self-defense world. And that's why we're gonna talk about it for a minute. I'm pretty sure I've brought up this issue of comfort in the past. It's an aspect of concealed carry that doesn't get nearly enough attention, especially the subjective nature of comfort. If our carry gear is uncomfortable, we're supposed to just suck it up. Think of the lives that could be saved by having the appropriate gear. Think of the pain and the anguish that your poor orphan children are gonna go through when you are killed in the streets for not carrying a, a spare magazine or whatever. Uh, I think that's a phase of the concealed carry journey that a lot of us go through at some point. Hopefully as we develop in our knowledge and our skills, we also develop a more nuanced approach to the hardware, understand that there are uh, different solutions to different needs. If you need a nudge in that direction, last week my friend Sarah from Filster Holsters released an excellent video on this topic. She explains why we should not just ignore discomfort from our carry gear. Then she outlines some extremely helpful tips on how to alleviate a lot of common comfort issues just by making minor changes to how our carry gear is set up or positioned on our body. I'd consider it required viewing for anyone who has ever found their carry gun to be uncomfortable, which I'd venture to say is everyone. Another great resource that explores a lot of these topics is the channel Armed and Styled. Tessa very clearly articulates some of the finer details of concealed carry. She actually breaks down and explains stuff that a lot of us just had to figure out through trial and error because nobody else was really talking about it. A good video to start with is the concealment percentage principle. That's about how to get a ballpark idea of what size gun is likely to fit you best before you ever try one on. Even with great resources like these, if you wanna carry on a daily basis, you still might run into comfort related problems that nobody else really seems to have a good answer for. And I'll give you a personal example. Like a lot of people, I struggle with sensory overload. In my case, it's nothing debilitating, but sometimes I find it overwhelming to be around things like loud noises or strong odors. Uh, I have a hard time tuning that stuff out, even when the people around me seem to be able to do that without any problem. Now, carrying around too much stuff in my pockets or on my belt is kind of like the tactile version of that. Even the small amount of stuff I do carry occasionally just drives me up the wall. At least once a week or so, I'll be sitting at my desk working and I have to just empty my pockets, take off my gun, my watch, even my wedding band. It's like I can't stop noticing that it's there. Now I don't bring this up because I want anybody to feel sorry for me. In my case, it's just a fairly minor annoyance in the grand scheme of things. My sensitivity level has ups and downs for months or even years at a time. And that's a big reason why I tend to vacillate between small guns like a J-Frame and not quite as small guns like a SIG P365XL. Now I know some of you out there are dealing with similar challenges, but nobody's ever told you that that's not normal. 
there are a few different medical problems related to sensory processing or sensory overload. Most people are never actually diagnosed with anything. It's an area of medical research that, as far as I can tell, it seems to kind of be in its early stages. Uh, now, even in my case, I have known of that I had some kind of sensory issues for decades, but it was only a couple of years ago that I actually connected that to the struggles that I had with finding comfortable carry gear. Maybe you don't have sensory issues, but you've got something like a nerve disorder, or maybe you've had uh, abdominal surgery. There are a ton of issues, medical or otherwise, that can make concealed carry more challenging. So when your favorite shooting instructor or Instagram star or whatever insists that quote unquote anybody should be able to carry fill in the blank with a specific size of gun or a spare mag or a tourniquet or whatever, you feel like you're doing something wrong when that doesn't work for you. Now anything new is gonna feel uncomfortable at first, you have to give it some time, and there's a lot you can do to optimize your gear for comfort. Most issues can be resolved with a little coaching, experimentation, and patience. But it's also possible to do everything right and still feel like your gun or your other carry gear is physically intolerable. Now, I don't have any easy solutions for that. Carrying a smaller gun and minimizing my other carry items has worked pretty well for me. Of course, that has some drawbacks. I've had to put in extra work at the range to be able to shoot a snub nose at a skill level that I'm comfortable with. And I'm also okay with that compromise because based on my own personal demographics and where I live and where I hang out, I am at extremely low risk for violent criminal assault. I also do carry some additional gear in a backpack that goes with me most places, um, at least in my car. I keep a medical kit in there and some other emergency items and even everyday tools. What I hope I'm getting across here is that everyday carry gear is a personal thing that has to be tailored based on the needs of each individual. Now that should go without saying, but there is kind of a trend right now to give people a hard time for what they do or don't carry. Now that's not to say there are no wrong answers. There definitely are. There is bad carry gear. Uh, if you're unclear about what your needs are and what carry gear is worth trying, you can fumble around for years with stuff that is either uncomfortable or just plain ineffective. So don't try to figure all this stuff out on your own, but also don't carry something just because somebody else carries it. Seek out concealed carry advice from credible people who understand that everybody's different and they need different solutions. Except that is when it comes to procuring ammo, there can be only one solution and that is to buy it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.